Spaceballs is a 1987 American comic science fiction film co-written, produced and directed by Mel Brooks. Starring Brooks, Bill Pullman, John Candy and Rick Moranis, the film also features Daphne Zuniga, Dick Van Patten, and the voice of Joan Rivers. In addition to Brooks in a supporting role, the film also features Brooks regulars Dom DeLuise and Rudy DeLuca in cameo appearances. The film's setting and characters parody the original Star Wars trilogy, as well as other sci-fi franchises including Star Trek, Alien and the Planet of the Apes films. It was released by Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer on June 24, 1987, and was met with a mixed reception. It has since become a cult classic on video and one of Brooks's most popular films. Topic. Plot. Planet Spaceball, led by the incompetent President Scroob, has squandered all of its fresh air. Scroob schemes to force King Roland of the neighboring planet Druidia to give them the code to the shield that protects Druidia, allowing them to steal all their air, by kidnapping his daughter Princess Vesper on the day of her pre-arranged wedding to the narcoleptic Prince Valium. Scroob sends the villainous Dark Helmet to complete this task with Spaceball One, an impossibly huge ship helmed by Colonel Sanderts. Before they can arrive, Vesper abandons her wedding and flees the planet in her Mercedes spaceship with her droid of honor, Dot Matrix. Roland contacts mercenary Lone Star and his morgue half -man, half -dog sidekick Bath, offering a lucrative reward to retrieve Vesper before she is captured. Lone Star readily accepts, as he is in major debt with the gangster Pizza the Hut. In their Winnebago spaceship, the Eagle 5, Lone Star and Barf are able to reach Vesper before Spaceball 1, rescue both her and Dot, then escape. Spaceball 1 tries to follow, but Helmet orders the ship to ludicrous speed, causing it to overshoot the escapees by a large distance. Out of fuel, Lone Star is forced to crash land on the nearby desert moon of Vega. The escapees travel on foot in blazing sun and pass out. They are found by the Dinks, a group of diminutive sparkly brown-clad aliens, and are taken to a cave occupied by a sage named Yogurt. Yogurt introduces Lone Star to the Schwartz, a metaphysical power similar to the Force. Yogurt also introduces the audience to the film's merchandising campaign. Star and Vesper begin to flirt, but Vesper insists she can only be married to a prince. Helmet and Sanderts break the fourth wall by using a VHS copy of the film to discover Vesper's location, and Helmet orders Spaceball 1 to the moon. The Spaceballs capture Vesper and Dot, and return with them to planet Spaceball. Their captors threaten to reverse Vesper's nose job, forcing Roland to give the code to the shield that protects Druidia. Helmet and Sanderts take Spaceball 1 to Druidia, while Lone Star and Barf rescue Vesper and Dot from the Spaceballs prison complex. When they arrive at Druidia, the Spaceball One ship transforms into Mega Maid, a robotic maid with a vacuum cleaner. The vacuum is then turned on, sucking the air off the planet. When the vacuum bag is almost full, Lone Star uses the Schwartz to reverse the vacuum, blowing the air back onto the planet. Once the air is returned to the planet, Lone Star and his allies enter the Mega Maid to attempt to destroy it. Lone Star is forced to fight Helmet with lightsaber like. Schwartz rings near the ship's self-destruct button. Lone Star defeats Helmet, causing him to involuntarily strike the button. Lone Star and his friends escape the ship while Scroob, Helmet, and Sanderts fail to reach any escape pods in time, trapping them in the robot's head as the ship explodes. Subsequently, they land on a nearby planet, much to the chagrin of its Planet of the Apes-like population. With Lone Star's debt to Pizza nullified by the gangster's untimely death, he returns Vesper to Roland and leaves, taking only enough money to cover his expenses. After a lunch break at a diner, and a strange incident involving an alien and an astronaut similar to the events in Alien, Lone Star finds a final message from Yogurt informing him that he is a prince and thus eligible to marry Vesper. He reaches Druidia in time to stop her wedding to Valium, announces his royal lineage, then marries Vesper. Topic. Cast John Hurt makes a cameo appearance credited as himself, parodying his character Gilbert Kane's death in the film Alien 1979. 
Various actors and comedians appear in unnamed roles, with Sal Vescuso, Michael Paniewski, Stephen Tobolowski, Robert Prescott, Tom Driesen, Rick Ducommune, Tommy Swerdlow and Tim Russ all appearing as soldiers of Dark Helmet. Additional unnamed appearances include Ronnie Graham as the wedding minister, Day Young as a waitress, Jack Riley as a newsman, Ken Olfson as the head usher, Brian O'Byrne as an organist and Brenda Strong as a nurse. Ed Gale, Felix Silla, Tony Cox, Antonio Hoyos, Arturo Gill and John Kennedy Hayden appear as the Dinks. <laughs> <laughs> development When Brooks developed Spaceballs, he wanted his parody to be as close to the original as possible. Even though the yogurt character Mel Brooks mentions merchandising in the film, Brooks' deal with George Lucas on parodying Star Wars was that no Spaceballs action figures be made. According to Brooks, Lucas said, your action figures are going to look like mine, I said okay. Brooks also had Lucas Company handle the post-production, saying, I was playing ball with the people who could have said no. Lucas later sent Brooks a note saying how much he loved Spaceballs and that he was afraid he would bust something from laughing. Pullman got the part of Lone Star when Brooks and his wife Anne Bancroft saw him in a play. He had never seen Star Wars prior to filming. Brooks had been unsuccessfully trying to sign on big-name actors such as Tom Cruise and Tom Hanks for the film. Pullman said, I think Mel was hurt that they didn't take him up on it. But then it attracted Ed, two of the big comics at that time, John Candy and Rick Moranis. Once that was secured, then he said, heck, I'll get somebody nobody knows, and I got a chance to do it. Zuniga initially found Brooks' film parodies, too crass and not too funny. But after working with Brooks, she said, I have this image of Mel as totally wacko and out to lunch. And he is. But he's also really perceptive, real sensitive in ways that make actors respond. Topic. Music An official soundtrack was released on Atlantic Records on audio CD and compact cassette, featuring many of the songs heard in the film, as well as three score cues by frequent Brooks collaborator John Morris. For the 19th anniversary, La La Land Records released a limited edition CD, presenting the score in its entirety for the first time, with bonus tracks featuring alternate takes and tracks composed for, but not used in the film. Spaceball's main title theme, John Morris. My heart has a mind of its own, Jeffrey Osborne and Kim Carnes. Heartstrings, Berlin. Spaceball's love theme, instrumental, John Morris. The Winnebago crashes, the Spaceball's build mega made, John Morris. Spaceball's, the spinners. Hot Together, The Pointer Sisters, Good Enough, Van Halen, Wanna Be Loved By You, Lady Fire, Raise Your Hands, Hidden Track, Bon Jovi. Topic. Release Topic. Box office The film had an estimated $22.7 million budget, and ultimately grossed $38,119,483 during its run in the United States, taking in $6,613,837 on its opening weekend, finishing behind Dragnet. Critical reception The film received mixed reviews from critics. Rotten Tomatoes reported that 58% of critics gave positive reviews based on 38 reviews with an average rating of 6.3.10. At another review aggregator, Metacritic, which assigns a rating out of 100 top reviews from mainstream critics, the film received an average score of 46%, based on 14 reviews. 
Many critics agreed that, while it was funny, doing a Star Wars parody ten years after the original film had been released seemed pointless. Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times gave the film 2.5 stars out of 4, and remarked, I enjoyed a lot of the movie, but I kept thinking I was at a revival, it should have been made several years ago, before our appetite for Star Wars satires had been completely exhausted. Topic. Home media Spaceballs was first made available on VHS and Laserdisc in February 1988, they were re-released in the late 1990s. The VHS edition was issued twice, the latter edition was presented in widescreen. Meanwhile, the Laserdisc also gained a commentary track with Brooks, this was transferred over to the DVD and Blu-ray releases. The film was first released on DVD on April 25, 2000. This version also contained the making of documentary and a collectible making of booklet. The film was then released in the collector's edition on May 3, 2005. This edition contained more extras including the documentary and the video conversation about the making of the film with Brooks and Thomas Meehan. On August 7, 2012, the 25th Anniversary Edition was released on Blu-ray containing many of the same bonus features as the 2005 DVD release with the addition of a new featurette. <laughs> Possible sequel and animated series Spaceballs was developed into an animated television show which debuted in September 2008 as Spaceballs, the animated series on G4 US and Super Channel Canada. Moranis claimed in a 2013 interview that he and Brooks had discussed a potential sequel, with Moranis pitching the title Spaceballs 3, The Search for Spaceballs 2. However, he and Brooks were unable to structure a deal that would allow the project to move forward. In February 2015, Brooks said that he would like to make a sequel to be released after the next Star Wars film and hopes that Moranis would reprise his role. A sequel with the whole cast is not possible since Candy, Rivers, Van Patten and DeLuise have passed away. This proposed film, Brooks said, may be called Spaceballs 2, The Search for More Money. Topic. Impact Spaceballs has made an impact on popular culture and been used as a referent and inspiration in other properties. Tesla Motors has used Spaceballs Starship Speeds Light Speed, Ridiculous Speed, Ludicrous Speed, Plaid Speed as inspiration for naming their acceleration modes. In homage to Spaceballs, Tesla has ludicrous mode for acceleration beyond its insane mode, and plaid mode, overtop ludicrous. Topic. Props A 1 12th scale model of the Winnebago, Eagle 5, was auctioned on December 11, 2018. The model was created by film special effects designer, Grant McCune, who also created models for Star Wars and Star Trek. The model makes an appearance early in the film with the introduction of Barf and Lone Star. <laughs> 